If you add these infrared absorbing gases to a planetary, uh, to a planet, then what happens is the sunlight comes in as before, but when the surface tries to radiate the space in the infrared, it is blocked, it is impeded by the absorbing gases. And so the surface temperature has to rise so that there is an equilibrium between what comes in and what goes out. So this is uh, the greenhouse effect. It is a misnomer for more reasons than one. It's a misnomer in particular because that's not how the florist greenhouse works, but that's a very minor point. Um, there are other gases which absorb in the infrared, uh, all of, uh, many of which have been mentioned already, nitrous oxide, methane, the uh, halocarbons, and these are uh, products uh, partly of uh, um, agriculture, it's fertilizers, um, refrigeration, um, aerosol spray cans, and so on, all products of our technology. We don't generate much water into the atmosphere, but we certainly do generate a great deal of carbon dioxide through the burning of wood and uh, fossil fuels and apparently uh, benign uh, activity. Who could object to uh, humans burning oil and coal, gas, and wood? Um, I'd like to stress that the greenhouse effect makes life on Earth possible. If there were not a greenhouse effect, the temperature would, as I say, be uh, 30 centigrade degrees or so colder, and that's well below the freezing point of water everywhere on the planet. Uh, the oceans would be solid after a while. Uh, a little greenhouse effect is a good thing. But there is a delicate balance of these invisible gases, and uh, uh, too much or too little greenhouse effect can mean too high or too low uh, a temperature. And here we are pouring enormous quantities of uh, CO2 and these other gases into the atmosphere every year with hardly any concern about its long-term and global consequences.